Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Hopefully, you liked the last video that I made with conspiracy theory stuff. So I made another one, even though I made it before that the other one was uploaded. But you get the point. I hope you like this one too. Watch until the end because it's going to be helpful for me. And if you're a new subscriber, like, share and subscribe. Also, if you're an old subscriber, like and share. And uh, I'm going to tell you this. You're going to like this video and subscribe. Or DB Cooper will come for you. For some reason. In some way. In some place. And I'll make the rules, I just follow them. So, you don't want that to happen, so yeah, do it. So, welcome back to the Great Jane Show. It's me here, Great Entertainer, and we're gonna be checking out who D.B. Cooper is and what he did. So let's see. Now, first, Dan Cooper is the pseudonym of an unidentified man who hijacked a Boeing, a uh, Boeing, a Boeing, however that is called, a seven seven hundred and twenty seven aircraft in the northwest United States the airspace the airspace in the airspace between Portland Oregon and Seattle Washington on the afternoon of Wednesday November 24 of 1971 the man purchased purchased his her his airline ticket using the Elias Dan Cooper but but whatever because of a news miscommunication became known in popular lore as the B Cooper. He extorted two hundred thousand dollars two hundred thousand dollars then is like Holy holy moly the equivalent to of one million and two hundred and sixty thousand dollars in nineteen nineteen in twenty nineteen. Most likely that is not much of a change thing because we're living in one year at the future. Great. Now he got himself all this cash. He pursued it to an uncertain fate. Nobody knows what happened. So, there was, despite an extensive manhunt and FBI investigations, the person was never found or identified. Which means nobody knew what. Nobody knows what happened. So, the case of an air pirate, that was the only case of air privacy not known what the heck was happened. So, many FBI agents think that he did not survive the high-risk jump. But his remains never were seen, okay? They were never seen. The FBI has maintained an active investigation of 45 years after the hijacking. 45 freaking years. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage. However, despite a case file that has grown to over 60 volumes over the period, no defined definitive conclusions have been reached. So he could be anywhere. He could be just sipping on a on a pina colada over there at Mexico or something. So numerous theories exist, you know. So many investigators, reporters, and amateur people. A young boy discovered a small cache of ransom bills along the banks of Columbia River in February a. 80s decade, okay, at the 80s. 
the enthusiast, whatever. The fine triggered in renewed interest, but ultimately only deepened the mystery, and the great majority of the ransom remains uncovered. The FBI officially suspended everything. The FBI basically stopped everything at 2016. But they continue to request that any physical evidence that might emerge related to all this stuff to the rent of the or the ransom money is submitted for analysis. Yes, what does this mean? To be honest, most people think this dude is dead. But we're talking about the FBI guys, just FBI can find anything. I'm pretty sure they could find me speaking right now. FBI, if you hear me, what's up? I if if you would like me to join you, would be really cool. Would be really awesome. Not not really. Um, I, I well, yeah. I it depends on how much you pay. Me, me basically, give give me money up. <laughs> yeah, that that was weird. But whatever, would be cool. Well, whatever. Most likely, I will never be in FBI. So that's when depression will hit me. Yeah, whatever. So, um, done. So JP Cooper, you know, he could be either dead, laying under a lot of dirt. Could be the first thing that could happen. However, that would explain the money that was washed up. He could also do something else. He could just have a small amount of the money um, or something over there and just yeet them and run. He could, yeah, that is where the reason, you know, he could be falling in a hole and he could be falling in the hole so hard that the ground would just um, collapse on him and he would die horribly. However, we could think of this, okay? There was a really big investigation, okay? It would be, e people would search a hole, and people would be sent to track what happens in a hole. It would be way easier to find something laying dead on a ditch how, than finding something alive that's actively hiding for you from you okay trying to get the freak out of there his body was never found it could be both also we're talking about the FBI FBI can find anything as I said and what else was it that search stuff whatever I don't really care now he could be either laying, resting in peace, or being somewhere and living in this mansion, living off of random homes to people who pay money to get these homes, and not spending his money, becoming a successful businessman, and hopefully finding a plan to ruin the world. If you want to ruin the world, man, um, Dan D.B. Cooper, I would be interested, just saying. Just kidding, guys. But would be pretty cool, whatever. Would be pretty fun. From Way more fun than being conquered, but whatever. So, let's see the hijacking. How did it go? Now, on Thanksgiving... A middle-aged man carrying a black attached a black suitcase, whatever, Appro approached the fly, a person who who f a flight a person, okay, whatever. That person, of in the Northwest whatever airlines, so, he identified himself as Dan Cooper and used cash to purchase a one-way ticket on flight 
A 30 minute trip from north to Seattle. He boarded the aircraft, a Boeing, whatever it is, I don't really know about aircraft, um, and took the seat, agent C. What does it, what does it say? Okay. I'm asking him, bloody blah blah, I don't care. So, by one account, by another. So, he was really quiet, okay? He appeared to be in his mid 40s. He was wearing a business suit and a black tie, and a white shirt. He ordered a drink, bourbon and soda. I'm not sure what that is. Th this was the 80s, so maybe the they had two Coke. Coca Cola, I mean. Not the other type of coke, guys. Not the other one. But whatever. So he took off. And flight 305, approximately one-third full, departed to, from Portland to schedule at 2.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Shortly after takeoff, he handed a note to Florence Schaffner, a flight attendant, that's how it's called. Flight attendant. Most likely I won't remember that. But whatever. Mm. So. She said you. So. Yeah. She thought. The air assistant. As attendant. Whatever. Assumed that. the <laughs> It contained. A lonely businessman's. Phone number. Drops it unopened into her purse. However, Cooper leaned towards her and Miss and said, <laughs> Miss, you better look at that note. I have a bomb. <gasps> God. Also, this is really funny, you know. You're like, oh, did everybody try to flirt with me? Oh my God. God, that was the weirdest voice that I've ever said. I've ever heard. Whatever. And you're like, ma'am, this is Wendy's. By the way, there's a bomb. It's gonna go boom, and it's gonna kaboom your face. Dab, dab, dab. So, the note was printed in neat, all capital letters with a felt tip pen. In exact wording, and exact words were known. Because he reclaimed it, Cooper, you know. But Schaffner, she, whatever that is, recalled that the note said that Cooper had a bomb in his briefcase. After Schaffner, whatever that is, Cooper read the note. Cooper told her to sit beside him. She did as requested, then quietly asked to see the bomb. Cooper opened the briefcase long enough for her to glimpse eight red, l whatever that is, cylinders, four on top of four, attached to wires coated with red insulation, in a large c cylindrical battery. After closing the ba briefcase, he stated he demands $20. Thousand dollars. I want twenty thousand dollars, or everybody dead. B b b b b b beanie hat. I don't really think that this exists. Whatever. So what happened next? He in um, in negotiable American currency. The four prior suits. Two primary and two reserve, and a fuel truck standing by in Seattle to refuel the aircraft upon arrival. So you see what happened. What's gonna happen? You know. So when he she returned, Cooper was wearing sunglasses. The pilot William contacted the traffic control, which informed everything, and they arrived in Seattle. You know. So, the, their arrival in Seattle would be delayed because of a minor mechanical difficulty. Imagine guys getting off the airplane and being like, Oh, 
Everything is a-okay, guys. Like, what the heck? Why do they, why do they have all these cops here? Uh, thanks for the welcoming, I guess. Ma'am, there's a door in the plane. The, the cops were like, Oh, th there was a bomb in that plane? No, everything was so nice and happy. Rainbows and kittens. Everything was happy and great and nice. And then it goes kaboom. <laughs> and everything blows up the smithereens. But whatever. So what happened next? When, well, well. The pilot contacted the air traffic. And the, the people... The thirty the passengers were given f more false information. Okay, whatever. The Northwest Orient's president authorized payment of the ransom and sh and ordered all employees to cooperate fully with the hijackers' demands. The aircraft budget, whatever that is, for approximately circled. You know for two hours to allow Seattle police and the FBI sufficient time to assemble his parasites and ransom money and to mobilize emergency personnel. The flight attendant recalled that Cooper appeared familiar with the local terrain. At one point he remarked, looks like Tacoma down here, down there, whatever. Uh, so as the aircraft blew over it. You know guys, let me be honest. This dude most likely did his research. He read his good old Wikipedia page about how to do air flight bad things, I don't know. So, what happens next? He also mentioned correctly that Mac Whatever Mecca Force, what base was that? Was only twenty minute a uh, twenty minute uh, drive at the time from Seattle Tacoma Airport. Hmm. <coughs> also, guys, this dude was calm, polite, and well spoken. He not as not at all consistent with the stereotypes and law and enraged hardened not criminals or take me to Cuba political descendants and descendants popularly associated with air privacy at the time so this dude you know what he told you know it was all calm non nervous nobody he didn't really care like it was like I have a plan, everything's gonna be A okay. I don't really care, no matter what happens. A O L O L X D Dab Let me post this on Instagram. Hi <laughs> God imagine somebody posting that on Instagram. How many how many likes it would get? God, maybe that's the solution that we need. <laughs> so I can stop being um, not getting views. I said, <laughs> God, what am I saying? I said, hijack a plane. <laughs> Definitely a great idea. Really not a great idea. But let's say that it would be. In no way. So let's see. Um, well, everything was a okay. So he, he let the passengers go, but he didn't let the pilots go. Hey, they got the money, everything, a okay, cash. So most of them were beginning with the letter L. So indicating insurance by the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco, and most and most from the 1963A or 1969 series. And made a microfilm photograph of each of them. So they made a photograph of each of them, guys. Like, but uh, you know, um, they got military pieces, and everything was a okay. Do you know, guys, where he got four parachutes? One for him, one for the money, and the other two were, were in case that they decided to give him bad parachutes. 
So the Seattle police obtained them. They they obtained everybody. Okay, wait a minute. Kuba rejected the military issue parachutes offered by Mc McCord AFP personnel, instead demanding several parachutes with manually operated rip cords. Seattle police obtained them from a local skydiving school. So they got parachutes. So they released the pa the do release the passengers, and it went back in the air. You know. So what happened next? Was everything was um he he took off okay he hauled the pallets and um, as I said the people didn't know a thing after that they, he got on the pallets and went okay guys goodbye after that he went in the air after that however he j he just how many times did I say after that whatever. So, he gone in the air, and after getting in the air, apparently, he started skydiving for some reason in a town. He apparently really did just plan all this stuff a lot, because, um, he, you know, he did, um, he did get himself, mm. he knew a lot of stuff, okay? He knew flight speeds, everything. What we see is not a normal person who just when wake up one morning it was like, you know what? I'm broke. I'm gonna go get myself some money from a plane heist. Why not? He that dude, you know, had some research done. However, after that, there was an investigation. Which kept kept going for sixty years, for years, goddammit, okay. So people searched from the ransom money, but let me be on let's be honest, okay. Who checks out you get a dollar, okay, a dollar. One dollar bill. Do you see Oh is this man like is this dollar um a one of the dollars that were Taken from a heist that happened that day. No, you really don't, guys. Just, just you don't. So, heck. After that, nothing happened. Nobody was found. Nothing was found ever. Nothing but what is it? A portion of whatever there was. So he was never found. So, why did they not close the the searching earlier? And why did they say that he was dead? They could say that he was dead for a lot of reasons. But the main reason was for nobody to do what he did. Because if you have the message that, hey, anybody can go and uh, hijack a plane for money. Everybody's going to be doing just that. The FBI just said, "Don't do it, or you're gonna be dead. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be leaving to tell the tale. People be like, not a good idea. I'm just gonna sit in my home and just play a little of Hello Well or something, or may, or maybe just play a little bit of Fortnite. So that's it for this video. I hope nobody just." Does what this dude did because it's a bad idea and uh, I want you to just go share this video to everybody because it would help my channel do good like and then share and then subscribe and maybe write a comment about something you would want me to do or another conspiracy theory that's it for today's video I'll see you in another one this was great entertainer and I'll see you the next time in the Great Entertainer Show. Goodbye. Also, I'm gonna just, 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 just close it. Okay, I, I don't care. Also, click one of the videos right here, cause it, it would be really cool. So, click one of them right now. Goodbye. I'm, I'm just gonna talk until it goes to 25 minutes, cause it would be really cool. Yeah, f three.
two. That's it for me, guys. That's it for real now. Goodbye, everybody. See you next time. And the Great Danish Show. Goodbye.